I wanted to let you know, everybody, that this session is an impromptu, given that our presenter for the session, Stephen Alaguaxi, was unable to turn, in, turn up in the room. We had some troubles initially, but that might still happen. His session was about transforming education in totality. So we're having a bit of a network discussion here along those lines. And we started up with this question from Diane, who is in New South Wales. She's asking, what's the whole 21st century learning look like in typical classroom in other countries? So it'd be really good to hear from Dana in Romania. And I'm not sure where Alona is from, but we'll hear from you. And so what we've done so far is we've put some text and some pictures up to give an impression of what we think 21st century learning looks like in some places. So let's continue the conversation at this point because we've decided to record it. And let's swing back and see who else would like to give their voiced opinion on what is the 21st century learning look like in their country. So I'm wondering if you have your microphone there, Dana. If you do, just click on the talk button. But first, let's hear from Diane. Diana, I'm unable to hear you. Is anyone else having trouble? Sorry, Diane. What you might need to do is check your audio setup wizard. If you go up to your tools, choose audio and then the wizard, and that will go through some testing for you. So uncheck your mic or your talk button first and then try that. Appreciate you uh, wanting to talk to us, but we can't hear you right now. Thanks. All right, and to answer your <laughs> concern there, Gail, yeah, I was really putting it on Dana then, wasn't I? What's it like for 21st century teaching in your country? We've all got some opinions, and I think that's what we're after today. Welcome, Sue. Have you got some thoughts on this topic? Yeah, um, I find that now that I've retired and I get to go visit other classrooms around Tasmania, there's a great variety of things happening. Some classrooms or schools are using computers and that sort of thing really well in their classrooms. Others, it often depends on the teacher and what they feel comfortable with, which to me is pretty, you know, teachers by now should be used to computers in their classrooms. They've had them there for 30 odd years, but some of them are still only using it for, you know, finding out the answers and printing out um, Word documents and that sort of thing which I think is a great pity compared to what is available there now. The only thing I do is I have um, an online classroom and my classroom is for students who want to come in and learn about blogging and I just hold it one afternoon a week but I'm available any time if teachers want to have the classroom open. But, you know, I really enjoyed my last few years of teaching because I got to do blogging, Skyping, um, and using lots of other 21st century skills, lots of different tools. But um, I think the majority of teachers, no, 
they're not quite up to all that yet. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, that's a, a considered opinion and it's probably one that's held by many of us that it, in some cases it takes a few years to actually develop the confidence and capacity for doing that. I'm looking at the comment from Gail about uh, the way in which uh, Alaskan schools are forging ahead there. I'm really intrigued with the whole notion that they're able to use robots to bring teacher support or PD to classrooms. Do you have any details on that, Gail? I can share a little. Um, the Kodiak Borough, Island Borough School District, I think it's called, but in Kodiak, Alaska, is a uh, um, has a one town, and then the rest is fairly remote. In fact, if you go to the link I put on there for their Facebook site, you'll see there are things like a mudslide, and so certain buses of children won't be going to school because there's, the roads are closed, or um, watch out around this school because there's a bear in the territory. So it's a very wild and um, in some ways remote place. But what was interesting to me, I was sitting this morning in a conference session with their superintendent, and he was sharing with me that they use these virtual presence robots and um, they were looking for some professional development and support to help their primary teachers um, in the way they were running, doing their literacy work. And so it's difficult to hire people to live in Kodiak, so they have a t the person is actually living um, uh, more than a thousand miles away and comes only to Kodiak twice a year, but via this robot that she can control from um, where she is, she's able to be in the classrooms and see and hear and speak with the teacher and the students in those classrooms from where she is, and she can remotely control those. So they can see her and she can see them. Um, and so that was fascinating to me. He went on to tell me that um, in addition they have uh, a program, the, the example he used was welding, and that the welding instructor um, is teaching children to weld um, from remote distance, uh, and the children, the young people, these are high school, so teenagers, were learning and getting their welding certifications um, uh, from a remote location. He found that these isolated kids, in some cases, the high school age kids, might be the only um, the only 15 year old in the community in school, and so they're very isolated. And they've had a problem with teen suicide. And since he, they've been working on using distance learning to support the children, in five years they've not had any suicides of teenagers. So they're using the distance to bring kids together. So there was quite a lot of stories there, but I think in the context of 21st century learning, I think it is about that um, distance ceases in some ways to exist, and I think that's really very exciting. Thank you, Gail. It certainly is quite exciting. Uh, it's uh, innovative in, in a very different way and I appreciate you passing that on. Uh, just while you were talking, I was thinking about the different kind of innovations in classrooms for adult learning. And so I, I figured that still fits within your question, Diane. Um, so typical classrooms for adults are now morphing a little bit into uh, a different perspective, and one of the ones that I wanted to just touch on was this whole program called Uni for You. And in this program, students can study a diploma course. So for example, I'm mentoring students in the Diploma of Business Management, and also mentoring students in the Diploma of Community Services, and they are in small community learning environments here in the northeast of Victoria. So just to give you an idea of uh, where I'm located, it's uh, a, a tourist area and we stretch from towns like Albury Wodonga, which is right on the river, spanning the two states of New South Wales and Victoria. 
and then we also service areas of community centres all the way down to Mansfield and in this particular centre called the Mansfield um, Adult Community Education, which is what MACE stands for, they've actually come up with a partnership with one of our leading universities in Melbourne called Swinburne. And I'll just um, take, give you the link to their website so you can find out more. And they've come up with this partnership idea between the Mansfield Community Education Centre and the university to make opportunities for students in the diploma level to get their education where they're located without having to travel to a large university which for us to travel to Melbourne is a four hour journey. And this year I've enrolled in one of those so that I can give even more specific mentoring help to the students in business management. So on a Friday afternoon, twice a month, my tutor comes to us to the Barranduda Community Centre. And for the rest of the study time, we are linked with the Swinburne University where we can go into their library and get articles. We are also linked by the use of ebooks, so our textbooks also feature in electronic format through Pearson's, which is the name of our ebook publisher. And so it actually gives the students a variety of ways in which they can study and learn together without having to travel. And it was a funded project. So all of that, that whole diploma course, that's 12 months, only cost them $350 Australian. Now that's a huge benefit because normally the cost of that program is 3500 so with a bit of foresight from the funding body, this is spreading the learning out to the community centres where people do want to keep learning but are often disadvantaged by distance. The other really neat part of the program is that not only do we have our tutors doing the travel, we're online with them. We use Blackboard Collaborate and we can join in with sessions to learn about all sorts of components of our course. So it's a, a really great blended learning uh, opportunity. So I just thought I'd touch base with you on that and uh, share it with you. So I'll hand back the microphone now to Anne and see if we've got some other ideas to explore what 21st century learning looks like in typical classrooms. must be uh, busy doing something else. We're all doing separate things behind the scenes here. Uh, welcome Peter, you've just joined in. We were unable to uh, get our presenter for this session and therefore we've swung over to have a, an impromptu discussion. So do you have your mic with you Peter? Hello Carol, I've got my mic while Peter works out if he's got his. Sorry, I was trying to help the next presenter in another room. Um, but I would like to quickly share my photo. I had two girls that would not come up to a web camera and a microphone when we did a mystery Skype session. So these two girls, um, I, at the last minute I threw them in on a link up with Taiwan and they had to talk and speak and communicate with students in Taiwan. So I love them learning beyond our textbook. It means they can connect in real life with other people and learn from those who live there rather than read about it, think about it, not really understand what it looks like to be in another country. So I think 21st century um, education will be more and more um, global connection 
local connection, national connection, being able to learn from experts outside the classroom, um, students being able to connect with other students, learning from each other, um, and solving problems together in projects. So that was my photo. I love it. I love the faces, the fun, the excitement. And these students in Taiwan ended up singing them a song, sent them all kinds of wonderful messages in the chat. So we've got the white Caucasian students talking to the Asian students in Taiwan. Thanks, Carol. Brilliant, Dan. You do such amazing work. And uh, I love the photos. I think that brings the whole idea of what 21st century learning looks like uh, right up on the screen. Uh, I need to check with Diane first if you've got your microphone sorted because we'd really like to hear from you. And I'm really anxious to hear from B. If you have a look back in the text, <coughs> excuse my voice, and we'll just find out what B had to say because it was fascinating that Japan is a, an improving country. and most of the teachers who can use computers or technology use them without purpose. They're just checking and doing experimentation. Some of the teachers don't like using the computers at all. But it's good that they're actually um, experimenting with it. So I was wondering, B, if you were able to use the microphone. So let me know, and then we'll just see if Diane can be heard. text says she doesn't have a microphone. Oh, that's unfortunate, but I can hear you now. <laughs> so let's swing back to what you would like to share with us. And thanks for starting up this whole conversation. It's great. Diane, you just need to click the talk button again. Yep. I'm sure I could hear you a minute ago, but now I can't. Let me just check with someone else if you would like to share something further in our impromptu session. I see Keith has joined us. Uh, we're just talking about the whole idea of 21st century learning. I know you've got a wealth of experience and that you've shared it with some others already yesterday. Would you like an opportunity to tell us what your classroom looks like, Keith? Yeah, yeah, certainly. I'm just going to make sure I'm clicking on the right talk button. Our classroom that we've got, well, we've got two classrooms, really. We've got, got um, the broadband for seniors, which is quite a small, narrow room. And we have the two uh, kiosks there for, that were provided with broadband for seniors. And the centre that, uh, that it's at um, found some money and bought another five laptops and desks to go with it. So we can train five seniors at a time in this room with three or four tutors. Our other session is a um, conventional classroom uh, in a U-shaped type, and we have uh, 12 students at a time. And, uh, and we go through uh, different topics. They're all, mostly all seniors. There's a few that are uh, on the lower end of the senior side. But uh, yeah, we've, we've got a range of topics, and we're currently uh, training them in that at the moment. Uh, the other lady that helps, she's a qualified, fully qualified TAFE teacher um, with all the necessary qualifications that you've got to have. Uh, unfortunately, um, she suffers from a bit of Ill health, Ill health at times, so uh, yeah, so that becomes a bit of an issue too. But together we work really well. Uh, we have a data projector in the other room, so and we inherited a heap of other laptops from a, uh, a training organisation that uh, uh, went out of business. And uh, they're quite old, but we managed to get Windows 7 running on them. So I'm the person who maintains the whole thing. So uh, now Anne is asking how do seniors go? Are they cautious of computers? And do they take long to be able to get used to computers? Well, they, everyone progresses at different speeds, exactly the same as the rest of us did when we were learning computers. Some people, you think, they haven't got any brain cells between their ears at all, and it takes ages to get there. And others seem to uh, to fly through it. So. 
um, our classic story, I think it was one 80-year-old guy. Uh, I thought he was in his 90, but he was in his late 80s. And uh, it took him five sessions to learn to play solitaire. Uh, but he persisted at it. And every day he would come along, I've forgotten, I've forgotten. You know, and uh, But we'd, we'd find out that, no, he hadn't forgotten a whole lot, but he'd forgotten a bit of it. So we'd uh, fill him back in again and get him going. And he got up to the stage of sending emails and being able to look up stuff on the internet. And he was so excited about it all. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed on. Uh, I went to his funeral and his family was so wrapped that Bob had learnt about computers and that in the latter stages of his life he'd got so much enjoyment from it. So that was incredibly rewarding to know that you'd actually helped somebody uh, in the latter part of their life. So yeah, so that's our little uh, session at, uh, at Wood Rising. Thank you, Keith. That is a lovely story, actually. I really enjoy that because we've gone from the primary learning spectrum right now, right up to um, the situation of palliative care training. Um, and I know that the broadband for seniors has been going for a few years now and that there are several of these kiosks. And uh, just wondering if Ian's here. No, Ian's not here at the moment, but he uh, has certainly been involved there. And the other thing that you do, of course, is that you use a blended learning approach for your seniors in the Blackboard Collaborate room as well. And uh, is that come under the heading of broadband for seniors or something else? Uh, in the Blackboard uh, Collaborate room, yes, that's all part of broadband for seniors. Uh, Catherine Devlin uh, is the manager of, of that. And uh, yeah, ALA is one of the uh, like subcontractors to NEC who are subcontractors to the government to provide the broadband for seniors scheme. So yeah, it's all part of broadband for seniors. Thanks for that. Uh, maybe you could just pop in a, a link for us into the text chat and we can add it here to the board. It's getting uh, quite big. <laughs> um, so I see something else on the board about seniors training and it's still happening. And I think that must be Gail. I can see that she's using the whiteboard. <laughs> uh, so when she's finished typing, she may come back and tell us a little bit more about that. And Diane, your mic is still on, but we can't hear you. So if you could please go to the tools and use the audio and then audio setup wizard. I'm hoping you can hear me. Yeah, this whiteboard is getting really brilliant. And I, I'm picking up on that point that Gail mentioned, I think it's Gail, mentioned over there about um, the swiping process <laughs> on an iPad. So are you able to tell us about that, Gail? Oh gosh, I don't think I said that. What did I say that was so brilliant? Oh, maybe it's not you that's written on the whiteboard. Um, could you just identify yourself, please, and come onto the mic and tell us about that seniors training? Oh, that's Peter, and he's not able to use a mic. Oh, what a pity. I'm just really looking at the issue of swiping and remembering what some of the comments were in uh, Gail's session the other day about um, the type of actions that need to be used on iPads. And you used some very clever words, Gail, uh, to describe those actions. Can you talk about that again? Sure. I was talking in the context of developmental um, skills for young learners, but it's true of all, all of us. And what, what I shared with was we start with slappers who are slapping and swiping. They don't have a lot of um, determination as to specific targets. And then we have um, pointers and tappers who use one finger. And then we move on to more successively more advanced, you know, coordinated efforts. And my experience with seniors, um, seniors meaning older folks, is um, 
that because we have some of, many of them have less mobility of their fingers, that multiple finger tasks on tablets are harder to do in some cases. So that may be what that was referring to. But um, yeah, it's there are if you use an iPad, I often use all, turn all those multi gestures off for both young learners and older young learners. It's amazing how cyclical life is, isn't it? Thanks, Gail. Yeah, uh, we've got that uh, vision now of the uh, the swipers and the slappers and the pointers and tappers. <laughs> I think there's another song coming on there. That's really cool. All right, we don't want to um, uh, take this session right up to the hour, so I'm thinking that we might just go for a couple more minutes and I'll put the timer on. And I'd really like to swing back to someone else to see if there's another aspect of 21st century learning that they'd like to focus on for those minutes. Um, Carol, B, I think, is still in the room. So B actually teaches in Japan then. B, do you have a microphone? Because we'd love to hear what it looks like in Japan. Are you there, B? And maybe in the chat you say yes or no. There's one, the curriculum changes. I think that's really important, um, Carol, if B doesn't respond. Yeah, uh, sorry, Anne. I think B already indicated she doesn't have her microphone today and is texting in there. Diane, is that you wanting to use the mic again? I'm not sure if it's working. No. Well, that's most unfortunate because, Diane, you've given us the topic that has filled this session in uh, the last 40 minutes. So we really appreciate that question and look where it's led us. That's what serendipity is like when you're walking around the corridors of a conference and uh, just bumping into people and having a chat. So yeah, let's swing back and have a, a brief chat about curriculum changes. Thank you, Gail. And Diane is mentioning that um, with curriculum, a little bit more random, so not so lockstep. Any other comments on curriculum changes? Yeah, school textbooks now, that's uh, making a huge change. And says so she tweaks the curriculum to fit the messy classrooms rather than follow the curriculum. I like that. Feel the fear and do it anyway is a good mantra, or just do it and ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> yeah, look, we get more variety when it's learner-centered, and we have noisy, busy, engaged classrooms. And that's true of learners from the age of six right through to the age of 60, 80, and 90. We just do it in different ways, and we are actually really pushing the boundaries to ensure that we are engaging in a 21st century learning style. Yeah, Gail, if it's silent, that really scares me too, especially when you're online. You know, those gaps and silences are a little bit scary. So I'm just going to want to wrap up now and see if there's any last comments from people in voice or in the text or on the whiteboard about what the whole 21st century learning looks like. So I'll just say that I think this session was a really good model in some ways of 21st century learning in that 
Um, Diane had something she was thinking or wondering about or a good question. And we all brought what we knew to the table and learned from and with each other and shared resources that we had and maybe gathered new ones we didn't have and brought that for the betterment of the group. And everybody did it with the tools they had, um, whether they were mic or no mic. Um, and I think that's a really powerful example of 21st century learning. And we did it from Alaska and Japan and I forget where else, Romania or Australia, and um, we all learned something. And kudos to you all for moderating that. And we have to realize now that the students in our classrooms, it's, it's not really 21st century, That's it's their life. They've now lived only in the 21st century, and they have only lived in a time when there's been smartphones and broadband and all the stuff that a lot of us as teachers have had to learn. So to me, we shouldn't be calling it 21st century now. It's their life. You see, what a great reminder. And I love that from Gail. 21st century is so last century. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. It's been a fantastic opportunity to network with you today. And with that, we will close the recording and invite you to pop over to the next sessions who are ready and waiting for you. Thanks, everyone.